Yo, what's going on people? It's your boy Ape Poncho, back at you again with another video. So, I'm pretty sure a lot of you watching right now know that feeling of unconditional love between you and your parents. And, and for any decent parents out there, I know for a fact that from watching you grow from a baby all the way until you're an adult, they'll still love you like you was born yesterday. But sometimes we see this bond broken by parents or children, and they not only break the bond, but they take it that one step further and go on to kill. A lot of the times it's over trivial arguments like the story we looked into where a man murdered his father because they had an argument over broadband speeds and sometimes the motive is a bit more obvious and this next story we're about to get into covers exactly that. On the 6th of March 2020, police were called at 1am to a property on King's Drive in Walton close to the village centre because because neighbours had complained that the dog who lived in the property had been barking non-stop. For anyone wondering where Walton is by the way, it's about a seven mile drive from Liverpool city centre. So when police arrived at the property, they found 64 year old Janice Child with severe blunt force head injuries and she was pronounced dead at the scene. After opening a murder inquiry, a 33 year old woman went on to be arrested on suspicion of conspiracy to commit murder and she was taken into police custody where she went on to be questioned. Later on that day, the police would go on to inform Janice's son Robert Child of his mother's murder at his address on King's Drive in Wirral, not to be confused with his mother's address, King's Drive in Walton. When police arrived at his address though, he was nowhere to be found because he had been out at the time, and upon his arrival back home, the police would go on to arrest him on suspicion of murder, and he remained in custody where he was being questioned by police. One day later, the 33-year-old woman would go on to be released on conditional bail pending further inquiries but the charges would be dropped sometimes later and then 37 year old Robert Child would go on to be charged with murder. Initially when he appeared in court he didn't enter a plea and his defence team wanted to explore mental health issues. Because of a no plea indication though a provisional trial was set for the 24th of August 2020. At his plea and trial preparation hearing on the 6th of April 2020 it was heard that the case was being delayed after there was difficulties getting Robert a psychiatric assessment. His defence would go on to explain that a medical expert who was initially tasked with making that assessment was unable to do so. This was due to it being in the full swing of the lockdown and at this time there was a ban on visitors being able to go into prisons which included legal representatives and although this was the case a new assessment was being sorted out. In this hearing it was heard that his team were exploring a plea of manslaughter due to diminished responsibility and it was heard that on the 8th of June 2020 we would see if this would be the case. At that date he did go on to admit manslaughter but I don't believe believe it's due to diminished responsibility and he went on to plead not guilty to murder but because the prosecution wasn't happy with his plea a trial was still to go ahead for the 24th of August 2020. His title in this hearing is also given as doctor and his occupation was given as psychologist. This will be important as we get into the trial so bear that one in mind. So the trial was to go ahead for the end of August and it would be on the 28th of that month that a jury would get sworn in and just as the last juror was getting sworn in out of nowhere Robert would go on to say that he wanted to plead guilty to murder of his mother Janice Child. However, even though he went on to plead guilty, the prosecution would go on to make claims that the day the police went on to inform him of his mother's death, the reason why he was out is because he was buying a £14,500 blue Jaguar car. And they said that after killing his mother, he went on and transferred £25,000 of her money into his account, and with that money, the Jaguar was bought. His barrister John Jones QC would go on to say that Robert would be going on to deny the assertion that this was a murder for financial gain and so this case was now to be determined by a Newton hearing. If you're wondering what a Newton hearing is, basically in a nutshell, it's a mini trial where the judge establishes any disputed facts of a case, which in this case would be although pleading guilty to his mother's murder, was it so he could gain financially or not? The outcome of this hearing would make a huge impact on sentencing because the usual style starting point for murder is life with a minimum of 15 years in prison while the starting point of murder for financial gain is life with a minimum of 30 years in prison so it's a 15 year minimum sentence difference. At this court hearing though it was heard that Robert was living with his partner Kelly Williams at the time and they were due to get married on the 16th of May 2020 but Robert was in quote unquote financial straits. 
on the morning of his mother's murder, it was said he only had one pound and one pence in his bank account. Remember how he said he was a psychologist and that the court was to address him as a doctor? Well, this was because he was working at Liverpool University in the field of sports psychology, but in order to get that job, he lied about obtaining a PhD from the University of Chicago. And in fact, he had only participated in a learning course from that university, which he also went on to fail to complete. On top of this, the prosecution also revealed that Robert had told his colleagues and acquaintances that he had obtained employment with Manchester United Football Club as a talent scout, which of course the police investigated and found out this was also false. In regards to the actual murder itself though, it was heard that the police were called to the house by neighbours because Janice Child's dog Alfie had been barking all night and when they arrived, officers forced the front door open and they were greeted with the dog who had been wearing his coat that he would typically be wearing during his walks that Janice took him on every morning and afternoon. As they were searching the property, they found and entered a door under the stairs which led into the utility room and it was here that Janice's body was found. She was lying on her front wearing an outdoor fleece jacket and had sustained a large wound to her scalp with blood covering the floor around her head. It was said that the walls, ceiling, skirting boards and worktops had all been splattered with blood. The prosecution said that the forensic examination revealed that Janice Child was struck when she was upright and also when she was low down or lying on the floor. The pathologist who carried out the post-mortem concluded that she suffered a total of 31 wounds probably involving more than one weapon. It was heard that Janice sustained widespread blunt force injuries to her head and face consistent with blows from a hammer. The right side of her upper face and back of her skull were quote unquote shattered, which the prosecution said demonstrated the use of considerable force. The prosecution went on to say that there were also a number of penetrating injuries to her upper neck, which may have been caused by a pair of secateurs that were also found at the scene. Janice was said to have tried to have defended herself though, as there were a number of injuries to her hands. Going into more detail about when police arrested Robert, it was heard that later on that day at 11am on the 6th of March 2020, around 10 hours after they had found Janice, the police arrived at Robert's home. His partner Kelly would enter the door and they were told that he was out buying a car. Robert had been out to the woods of Wirral which is a used car dealers and here he purchased a blue Jaguar VRM for £14,500 after using his mother's account to transfer £25,000 to his building society account at 4.30pm on the 5th of March 2020, one day before police found a body. The court heard that Robert had looked at buying the £14,000 car in February but was unable to provide the deposit and the prosecution claimed that Robert had stolen his mother's phone after murdering her and used it to authorise the bank transfer of £25,000 into his own account. More specifically though, it was said that he had made the transfer only five or six minutes after leaving the house, which would suggest that only five minutes after he finished murdering his mother, he went on to transfer the money across to his account. CCTV footage then shows his calculated movements immediately after the murder, and it captures him taking the number 75 bus around 4.45pm, and the route took him into the city centre at Myrtle Street where he got off. More clips show him calmly walking around at Walton Village, holding black gloves and keys. He then moves near Main Street, where he was seen near to the Coffee House pub, and then sits down on a bench with a black bag. Back to the following day though, which was the day when he went out to purchase the car. When he eventually got back home, it was said that he appeared shocked and upset after hearing the news that his mother had died, with the prosecution adding, the prosecution say that reaction was entirely fake. It was a simulated response because he knew full well that his mother was dead, and he killed a less than 24 hours before. Robert would then go on to be arrested at some point later as he gave inconsistent accounts of his movement on the day of his mother's murder and as the investigation developed it showed that he attempted to throw detectives off by deliberately leaving his phone at the University of Liverpool when he visited his mother and he also took a change of clothes and shoes before he disposed of a mobile phone and the hammer. But he made some slip ups trying to cover his tracks because detectives discovered a screwed up bus ticket in his possession from the area his mother lived proving that he'd been there a short time after his mother had died and he also left fingerprints in his mother's blood on the door handle. At a further court date it was heard that financial investigator Adrian McGrath told the court that Robert had been in around £32,000 
pounds worth of debt at the time of his mother's death and had two county court judgments against him for around £16,000. He went on to say that he had a joint savings account with his mother which had £14,000 in it, which was enough to cover the cost of the Jaguar and he would have been able to access this account without his mother's signature but the court heard a passbook was needed to credit or debit the account and only one was issued. In this hearing, a former colleague of Robert's, Philip Walker, would go on to tell the court that he got the impression that Robert didn't get on with his mother. In February, Robert had forwarded a message to him from his mother in which she had suggested to her son to stockpile food because of the coronavirus pandemic and it was heard in these messages he referred to his mother as the Brexit voting halfwit. And Philip would go on to say Robert was against Brexit. Given evidence in court, PC Nicola Island would go on to say that when Robert had been arrested, he asked if it was all a dream, adding he immediately began to shake, displaying signs of being extremely anxious. She said on their way to the police station, Robert had said, I only wanted to show her my car, adding, I took her to mean Janice, he didn't specifically name her. He told the police officer that his mother had cut him out of her life for a period of time because she didn't approve of his previous partner due to the colour of her skin, but they had since reconciled. At a later court date, Robert would give evidence in court and he would go on to explain that he'd went to see his mum because he planned on killing himself and they began to argue when he said he was quote unquote struggling. He claimed that in this argument she used racist terminology about his estranged wife Sangi Parara, a Sri Lankan national. He said that she disliked her for no other reason than the colour of her skin and according to Robert in this argument Janice would go on to reveal that she had been trolling Sangi on Twitter, but we'll get more into that when it becomes relevant. In 2015, Robert had split from her but remained married. Although still married, he had still went ahead and planned a new wedding with his new partner, Kelly Williams. He also told the court that his mum revealed that she had sent a fax to the Home Office to withdraw a visa application for his wife. He also went on to say that he started getting angry when his mum started to indicate that she had been following her on social media and had been attacked her online, adding that she showed him a Twitter login page with a number of different email addresses and told him every time that his estranged wife had blocked her, she'd open a different account. Robert said, I'd been in regular contact with Sangi since and I had known that she'd been attacked and trolled online by an unknown person or persons. I was aware of the effect it had on her mental health in the previous 12 to 18 months and, and the idea that it came from my mother five years after the relationship had come to an end was a shock. But the court had heard that there was no evidence at all of any Twitter accounts being found on Janice's laptop. In regards to the murder itself, he said he had followed his mum into the utility room while arguing with her, of course, about his estranged wife, and then he attacked her with a hammer, which was lying on the washing machine. He said, I'd made the decision that my life was going to end prior to going there that day, and had the conscious thought that if she was still around, she would continue to attack Kelly and Sangi with even more venom. He then accepted that he struck his mother 31 times and said, I remember the first strike, I do not remember the others, it was a frenzied attack, I do not recall. He went went on to say that he did in fact plan on buying the Jaguar with the funds from that joint account that he had with his mum, but she had offered to give him money from her own account while the withdrawal cleared and he intended on driving the car to Italy and it would be here he would take his own life. In his defence statement, he said that his relationship with his mother had never been loving, cordial or friendly and that she was a strict disciplinarian who found fault with everything he did. But numerous WhatsApp messages between the pair in the weeks leading up to and the morning of the killing painted a different picture and showed that Janice was in fact loving and protective. After the mini trial, Judge Dennis Watson QC would go on to agree with the prosecution that the motive behind the murder was for financial gain. He went on to say that this was a spite attack on his mother's credibility and a grotesque distortion of the truth as he ruled she did or said nothing to goad him. Sentencing him on the 8th of September 2020, he was handed a life sentence with a minimum term of 29 and a half years because he had already served six months in jail. The judge told him, you murdered her because you realised that there was no other way to obtain her money. You used chilling and ruthless violence in subjecting savage wounds to your defenceless mother. This was a merciless attack. So it really just goes to show you that even when you your mother shows you unconditional love, it isn't always shown by the other party, in this case it would be a child of course. In fact, what I didn't mention throughout the court hearings is the fact that Robert's cousin had actually spoken out in court and had gone to say that his mother idolised him and she ensured that he had the best things in life when he was growing up. The fact that he then went on to try and assassinate his mother's character instead of just completely owning up to it as well really does shows what kind of person he is on top of of course actually murdering his mother anyway. And the fact that he had £14,000 
in a joint account with his mother that he probably would have had access to just goes to show this wasn't even needed and to me it just looks like a case of greed. He probably thought let me use the 25k for spending and then he would have access to the 14,000 pounds as and when he wanted to get it out and it would have been no problem. Let's be honest his political views probably played a part in this as well because evidence in court did show that they had differences when it came to political views but for a difference in political views and 25k, is it really worth a human life and is it worth your mother's life, the woman who literally brought you into this world? Imagine you've cared, loved, protected this person from people like him, only for then for him to turn out to be exactly that and go on to kill you. It's just something crazy to think about. And I do want to take this time out just to send my condolences to Janice's family. I know six months has passed now, but obviously the court case has just finished, so it's still going to be pretty raw. So again, I don't just want to send my condolences out to her family at this current time but let me know what you guys think of this in the comment section below give the video a little like and if you want the latest drill street and music news out of the uk be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell it's been your boy poncho and i'm out